from the simplest to the rarest of materials. From the barks and fibers of plants to the densest of hardwood. From paper and clay and precious metals to that most wondrous substance, a mind in flight, expressing itself in a torrent of words. These are the materials from which our traditional artisans and craftsmen have built solid and grounded traditions. Fragments of a nation waiting to be made whole by men and women who bring an entire culture and knowledge system into their creations. These are the chosen materials of indigenous craftsmen. They who are the embodiment of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. Welcome to the third season of Dayao. In the next six episodes, we will unfurl textiles, caress the surfaces of wood and stone, relish gold and ivory. We will watch as beautiful objects are made from fibers, metal, clay, and paper. We will meet the minds that make of all these materials the expressions of a culture. I have always taken a very keen interest in weaving and in our weavers. In supporting our indigenous weavers, I support the community of Filipinas who are vessels of an ancient yet dynamic knowledge. Knowledge that is made new every time warp and weft are laid out to create a textile. In this season's first two episodes, we hold up to the light the expressive fibers of distinct cultures, as well as the strength and resilience of the weavers who make these into a tapestry of life. Professor Norma Respicio has spent much of her life and career studying the weaving traditions in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. Her book, Journey of a Thousand Shuttles, The Philippine Weave, is a comprehensive guide to the history, the fibers, the dyes, and the techniques that make Philippine weaving a tradition with many variations, many faces, many unique manifestations. Traditions, we would say, uh, are just indicated by uh, the presence of uh, spinder whorls in the Philippines. No? Uh, these were unearthed in Cagayan, uh, and these were dated uh, 2600 to 2100 BC. When it comes to technique, it's possible that this must have been just uh, plain weaving techniques, no? but uh, when we talk about uh, material evidence of uh, a finished textile in the Philippines, we would refer to the banton cloth. No? This uh, banton cloth uh, or pieces of this are uh, made of uh, linen. No? When we say linen, this come from the bust fibers. No? That would include probably uh, even uh, banana fibers because uh, or the sheath of the banana fibers can be considered as linen. No? So uh, in that Banton cloth, we say Banton because it, uh, these were found in an island known as Banton of Romblon. No? And uh, these are dated 14th to 15th centuries. No? Those would be the uh, material evidences of early practice in the Philippines. No? But uh, for Southeast Asia, there are lots of weaving traditions Threads are laid out to form a matrix of warp and weft. Though we like to think that it is the hands of the weaver that creates a textile, the weight of her body and the pressure from the lower back as it pulls against the threads is a vital part of the technology. Thus the name backstrap loom. There are two important wooden uh, bars. No? The one that is uh, pressed close to the, to the weaver's body 
that one is the cloth beam and that's where you have the rolled in there would be uh, the woven cloth no the woven part of the textile at the other end no would be uh, another bar this time it's not split into two but just a wooden bar of the same thickness as the one here close to the body of the weaver and it's uh, parang nakahang siya na ganun. One characteristic of backstrap weaving is that to open and close the warp, it's the torso of the weaver that moves. When the torso of the weaver moves forward, naluloosen up yung warp. So it's easier for the heddles to be raised and for the weaver to insert the beater. And then pagka once inserted, push back yung torso niya and therefore tamang tama rin naman for beating in the web. Shared by many indigenous peoples in Southeast Asia, the backstrap loom is a source of many iconic textiles. Groups that make use and have mastered this and have come up with really uh, exquisite textiles using simply backstrap would be all over Cordillera, the Ifugaos, the Bontok, the Kankanai, the Gadang, and even uh, the Kalinga. Though it may look simple and even primitive, the range of designs produced from this loom by so many weavers from all over the world is proof of its universal appeal. A shared technology that binds many weavers from many different cultures all over the world, just as it binds the weavers of the Cordillera. Mayroon talagang close similarity in terms of the use of some kind of ground weave, yung earring bone uh, design, or sometimes like uh, uh, parang diamond forms. You could see that in special cloths of the Kalinga, mainly for the upper class, and then also for special cloth for the Gadang. They are so fond of uh, coming up with that ground weave na parang diamond forms na thickly woven. In that sense, there is a similarity. And then also, some in the upper Kalinga region, the color scheme would be uh, similar to the color scheme of the Gadang. Red, white, a little bit of yellow. Aside from the all-over pattern and the ground weave, another characteristic textile of the Kalinga would be uh, that of lower Kalinga area, like in Lubwagan. Ayong kanila, it's, they have green, no? red, green, and yellow for the wrap-around skirt. Instead of weaving, they do the embroidery using thick yarn to come up with mountains and river design. One characteristic of Gadang weave, which is only seen among the Gadang, the use of tiny white beads. These are all put together just like bundle or a bunch. And then these are meant to decorate the end part of their edges of the belt or seam of their blouse or their shirt because both men and women use uh, upper garments, barawasi for the women and cotton for the men. No? They wear upper garments and on the um, edge of these upper garments, there would be several tiny beads attached to those hem and edges of the upper garment. They also use parang red and yellow tiny pom-poms. No? attached to their woven garments. Those would be the uh, characteristic features of Gadang, which cannot be seen in other Cordillera cultures. There seem to be a kind of giving valuation to all these trade beads. We don't see them produced in the Philippines, some of them Mediterranean type of beads. No? So these are given so much importance in uh, Gadang dressing up.
The Yakan of Basilan are renowned for their dense, tightly woven fabrics, each with a different name and motif associated with each specific garment and its usage. In museums and private collections all over the world, their seputangan headcloths hold pride of place that Yakan weavers are still producing exquisite textiles today. is a tribute to a resilience and skill that has withstood armed conflict and civil unrest. The Yakan weavers make Sinulaman, both the men and the women wear trousers. And the Sinulaman has the greatest warp count no? all over Philippine textile weaving traditions. It has the most number of warp. In a two-inch cloth of that uh, Sinulaman, there would be not just uh, 100 warp yarns, but would be 300 or 500 warp yarns, no? such that for one foot sinulaman uh, cloth, probably one would have more than 1,000 warp yarns. So they have the finest and pinakasiksik no? na weaving. And in their sinulaman, they uh, make supplementary warp design patterns like our glass no? or what we call uh, rice mortar design and diamond form or what we call the matamata design no? or rice grain design. While the women, other than wearing trousers, they also, over the trousers, would be a wrap-around skirt which they call the pinantupan. That wrap-around skirt exhibits uh, flower and leaf designs, no? but a little bigger than the uh, pinantupan hourglass and uh, diamond forms. No? So, but this time, instead of warp, supplementary warp uh, design technique, it is supplementary weft design technique being used here. The most uh, beautiful of all would be their uh, saputangan, their head cloth. That one, it's done in uh, supplementary weft technique, but it's called pick-up design technique. And uh, it's closely similar to what we could call tapestry weaving. In that saputangan head cloth, there would be a central uh, design, usually uh, a triangle or a square. The whole uh, composition would be symmetrical, balanced and symmetrical. Generally, this would all be geometric forms. No? Ang saputangan po, may isang mata, may limang mata, may walo po, hanggang 24 po. Ang ibig sabihin po ng mata, yung diamond. Yung ginagamit naman namin sa, para sa damit, pagalbato. Maghabi doon sa kahoy, tapos ilagay dito sa susen, ilagay dito sa sun, nagumpisa na. Ito, bibitan, bitan ng pangalan. Ito, gungin. Ito, bayre. Sisimula po, maghani. Pag nagtapos na maghani, dito. Pinapasok lang dito. Ah, ah, nuwa. Nuwa. Si, sinuaan. Ah, sinuaan. Pag nagubos sinuaan, magpag. Ah, pinagpagan. Design. Gawa ng pene ni, pinenean ni. Nowadays, the Yakan weavers produce a lot of these table runners, no? Around mga two feet in uh, length and maybe uh, one foot in width, no? Sometimes uh, longer ones would be used as shawls, no? So the design technique used there would be very similar to the design technique of the Lao people and the thigh. So this is something like a combination of warp float and uh, weft supplementary design. Ngayon po kasi ang ginagawa po namin, naggawa kami ng loom, pinapawib po namin sa mga ibang bata para po matuto sila at saka tinuturuan po namin sila kung paano. Tulad po ngayon may mga pamangkin po ako dito dalawa, nagwib po sila sa akin. Ako po ang gumagawa tapos tinuturuan po sila, sila ang nagwib. Pinatayo namin itong village para ma-maintain ma yung uh, customs and traditions ng mga kwan, lalo na sa weaving ng yakan. Halimbawa man ma makita ng iba, ma-appreciate nila yung gawain namin. Ganun po. Mapa-maintain, mapalagana para makita na 
hindi lamang dito sa Pilipinas, kahit sa buong mundo na ma-appreciate nila yung ginagawa namin. The Tingyan of Abra used to weave their binakol, dinapat, and pinilian textiles on backstrap loops. But today, the weavers have shifted to the box-type loop. According to history books, the very first pedal loom, the whole thing is framed with uh, uh, hard uh, wood, no? and it is square or box-framed uh, loom. No? But the important part of that would be the treadle or the pedals. No? So instead of the body of the weaver uh, going forward and backwards to open and close the warp sheds, it would be the treadles or the pedals that would, uh, by, by pushing them up, down, and up and down, somehow there would be the opening and closing of the warp yarns. No? The weaver, as they say, would have more convenient uh, working method in the box framing. Our visit to the weavers of Peña Rubia in Abra reveals that, despite the shift in technology, the old designs are still faithfully replicated. The Tingyan of Abra are famous for their large-scale blankets. The Pinilian, Dinapat, and Binacol motifs have become almost iconic, as these have been appropriated by fashion and lifestyle designers. But it is a weaving tradition that has much to do with ritual, spiritual belief, and above all, the use of natural organic material. The revival of indigo and other natural dyes is the mission of one ethnic man and his community. Indigo powder na nagawa na po namin, pinulbos namin mula sa mga halaman po na malatayong Ilalagay po natin dito sa mainit na tubig at tutunawin po para i-ready po natin sa pagkukulay ng blue na kulay. Dapat lang kasi ito, may, uh, katamtaman lang yung init niya kasi pag pinakuloan mo yan ng pinakuloan, sige, hahalo ulit yan. Kaya uulitin mo na lagyan ng pang pa, ano sa... sa to, sa tubig para yung kulay aapaw, yung dumi papailalim. Ito po ay hahanguin dito sa medyo mainit na tubig at ililipat dahan-dahan po para hindi po siya bubula. Dahan-dahan din nakukunin, dahan-dahan din ilalagay na ganyan. Pagkatapos ito na po yung ano, ito hindi na, eh, hindi na po natin lalagyan ng mordan para sa pagkapit ng ano. Kasi ang indigo po, uh, kahit hindi mo siya lagyan ng pampakapit, kakapit at kakapit pa rin yan. Yung indigo, yan ang pinakamaganda po sa indigo na kulay po natin. Dahan-dahan na rin siya, ilulubog na ganyan. Pagkatapos, pigain. Kulay habang nahahangin na na siya, lang iiba na po yung kulay niya. Magiging blue siya. Pagkatapos ito, pahanginan muna siya. Hanggang sa magiging kulay blue lahat yan. In our weaving history, indigo, it was one of the... Uh, important exports to the West, to uh, Europe and even to Mexico until the later half of the 19th century. Yung production niya siguro as a commercial or a cash crop, medyo it bumaba, no? But the local weavers continued to use it, especially that 
somehow, as I said, parang there is a kind of value given to uh, natural deep blue hue. Parang to them, usually find women or men wearing the deep indigo. This would be people who are of a higher social class. It had a value somehow expressive of the uh, higher social status of the person wearing. In the neighboring province of Ilocos Norte, in the barangay of Lumbaan, Bigpika, in Pinili, weaver Magdalena Gamayo continues to weave, and more importantly, teach young weavers. She has spent a good part of nine decades preserving and enriching the tradition of weaving in Abel. For her life's work, Nana Magdalena was awarded the highest distinction given to our folk artists. She was proclaimed a recipient of the Gawad Manilikanang Bayan in 2012. A weaving center and a museum housing her handiwork have since been opened to further preserve the traditions she has worked so hard to keep alive. So far, we've only explored the world of weavers who work with cotton. But what about weavers who work with other fibers, like in Aklan, in Antique, and other areas in Western Visayas, and in La Union, and parts of Region 1, and in the Cordillera? In many areas of the country, we find weavers adept at working with silk, with banana, and even with piña. We don't have any record at all how we got to uh, get those uh, silk worms, no? But it's possible that since we have very active trading uh, relations with China, and it's possible that we got the silkworms from East Asia through trade. Pinya, it is the finest of all fibers. It's really even finer than that of a strand of hair. It's very distinctly Philippine because the fiber can be gathered only from a type of pineapple, which is what the pineapple plant, which grows only in the Philippines. And in particular, this is the red Bisaya variety. The pineapple, the abaca, and cotton, no? those are the top three fibers uh, used in the Philippines. Filipino weaver uses materials coming from the natural environment. And these materials like grass, pandan leaves, thread from piña, banana fiber, sinamay, abaca, and all of this are regarded as sacred. Why? Because they contain a spirit. We regard these things as part of our everyday life. We commune with them, and they are not just dead objects. That's why when a weaver um, tries to get inspiration from nature, the inspiration is from a spiritual world. Among the Tibonis, there's a belief in the spirit or a nature spirit supplying the signs to the weaver. That's why we have the concept of dream weavers. And myth is very important in this regard simply because the moment you sacralize a tradition, it means that it's a very important part of everyday life. You have to consider the weaving as a whole um, and uh, we preserve the original nature of these creations as much as possible. This is how we revere 
typically the traditional weaving material that we find among our indigenous peoples, our traditional peoples. With the onset of the Industrial Revolution, well, we have now come to regard uh, traditional weaving patterns, materials, as just, uh, well, an input for contemporary design. This is the reason why many of our weavers have become simply mass producers of patterns that they repeat and repeat and repeat. With such a rich tradition and a continuing heritage of weaving expressive fibers into even more expressive textiles, how can we support our weavers? In my own capacity, I've always tried to see how the products can be viable, more marketable sources of income for the local community through cooperatives, through trade fairs and expositions where they get more exposure, through grants and financial and technical assistance that ensure that weavers get the right material, that they go on weaving, that they pass on the knowledge. For me, theirs is such a vital craft that says so much about the strength and the skill of a Filipina. And in our efforts to ensure the continuance of weaving by patronizing the work and learning more about the tradition, are we not also weaving a stronger national fabric? A fabric that contains all the beauty and inspiration that come with Dayao, our knowledge, our pride.